Welcome back everybody, my name is Sam, and in this video, I'm especially excited because I've partnered up with the JetBrains to showcase their new tool for developing cross-platform mobile applications, and it's called Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile. So thank you to JetBrains for sponsoring the video. Cross-platform mobile development allows you to build mobile applications with a single code base and then push them out to both iOS and Android for faster development and easier code maintainability. Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile is now in beta and ready for production. So a couple of announcements before we get started. First, if you do want to learn more, I highly recommend you check out the Kotlin YouTube channel as they will be having a series of upcoming webinars provided by the JetBrains team and their partners. There's also gonna be an Ask Me Anything session by the Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile team on Reddit, and I will try to do my best to get you guys that link in the description. All right, so what are we gonna cover in this video? First, we will set up our environment, covering all the necessary tools to get our application up and running. Next, we'll create our first project using Android Studio, and you're gonna see how easy that is to set up. Then we'll examine the project structure to see how it works and run our app on Android as well as iOS. Finally, we're gonna add a third-party dependency and write some basic code. All right, so let's set up our environment. We have a few tools we need to install. The first is Android Studio, which is what we're gonna be doing most of our development on. So you can head over to developer.android.com slash studio. I'm gonna assume you guys know how to install basic software, so we're not gonna go through those steps, but download Android Studio if you don't have it, and if you do already have it, make sure you're on the latest version. Now, I should mention if you want to run iOS applications either on a virtual or a physical device, you will need Xcode, which only runs on Mac OS. You can't run iOS app on Windows. So I'm using a Mac here, and this isn't just a restriction of this platform. You need Xcode to run iOS apps, and Xcode doesn't run on Windows. If you are on Windows, you'll still be able to develop using Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile. However, you'll only be able to run the Android side of things. But if you're on a Mac like me, install Xcode and make sure you're on the latest version. You also need the JDK installed. To check whether it's installed, you could just go to your terminal and type in java-version. You see I'm on Java version 17. If you don't have Java, you can just install it from the Oracle website. Next, we need to install two Android Studio plugins. So to do that, open Android Studio and then go to Preferences, then go to your plugins. And in the marketplace, the first one is gonna be Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile. As you can see here, I already have this installed. The second one is gonna be Kotlin. I do believe Kotlin comes installed with Android Studio, but just make sure you're updated to the latest version so you don't run into any compatibility issues. And then finally, we need CocoaPods, which is useful for adding iOS dependencies. To do this, you can just go to sudo gem install CocoaPods. If you run into any issues, you can troubleshoot by visiting the getting started tutorial that I'll be posting in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our first project. So open Android Studio. We're gonna to go to new project. We're gonna be creating a project from a template. So if you scroll down, since we've installed that plugin, we should see Kotlin multi-platform app here. Click next, give our application a name. I'm just gonna call it keep on coding tutorial. For my minimum SDK, I'm gonna be using Android 5.1. On this step, we're just gonna be leaving everything as the default. For iOS framework distribution, we're gonna be using regular framework. That way we don't require any third-party tools. Click Finish. At this point, Android Studio is setting up your project, downloading all the required components. Now this might take some time, especially the first time you do it, so just give it a few minutes. All right, there we have it. The project is now set up. And I mean, look how easy that was, right? The hardest part was probably waiting for it to download everything. So let's examine the project structure a bit. I'm gonna to switch to the project view. I'm gonna expand this keep on coding tutorial folder. So the main three folders we'll focus on are Android app, iOS app, and shared. So shared is a Kotlin module that contains the logic common for both Android and iOS applications. This is the code that's shared between the two platforms. So this module here will build into an Android library and an iOS framework. The Android app folder is a Kotlin module that builds into an Android application. So if we wanna open this up, now if you've developed Android apps before, you should be familiar with activities. And as you can see here, we have a class with our main activity in it. And then finally, we have the iOS app, which is an Xcode project that builds into an iOS application. And if we want, we can actually open this up. We see the Xcode project here. If we right-click 
and we go to open in Xcode. This will actually open our project in Xcode. And if we go to our content view, we see the Swift code here with our content view. Let's go back to Android Studio and run our application. So we see that we have our Android app selected here. I'm using a Pixel 5. Let's go ahead and run. So once your Android emulator is up and running, it will display our application. And at the top here, you can see it says, hello, Android 28. And 28 is the Android version that we're on right now. So this is running on Android. Now, one really amazing feature is that we can also run this on iOS without opening Xcode. So right now we're on iOS app. If we hit run, we see that Xcode is not open. So once that builds, we see an iOS emulator running iOS 16 and it prints out, hello, iOS 16. So let's see where this string is coming from. Let's stop our application. Now, if we go into the shared folder, we go to source, we go to common main, and we go to greeting. So the greeting string is generated here and it just returns hello and then the platform name. Let's go ahead and make a change here. Let's just reverse the string. So we'll do reversed. Let's go ahead and run that. So here we see hello, and then we see the iOS 16 is now reversed. Let's run it on Android. Let's switch back to Android. Let's run that. And we see hello, and then the Android 28 is also reversed. So just a simple change there, but it shows how making one change here in this shared folder reflects in both applications. So we make one change, but it propagates to both iOS and Android. All right, so let's do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's add a dependency to a third-party library and incorporate it into our code. Let's do something where it gives us the amount of days until the end of the year. So to do this, we're going to be using this Colin X daytime module. So the way to add this into our code is by going to Android Studio. Now in our shared folder, we're going to go to our Gradle file. And under source sets, we're going to go to val common main by getting. We're going to add a dependencies object. And the way to add this is if we go back to our application. And if we go down here, this shows us how to add this. So inside common main, inside dependencies, we just need to copy this, go to our application, and paste this in here. Let me go ahead and minimize the emulator here so you can see that. Now we just need to sync this and the dependency should be imported into our project now. Let's go back to our greeting class. Let's import this into our project. Let's create a new function. We'll call it days until new year. It's going to be returning an integer. So let's first get today's date. So we're going to get today's date. This requires a time zone. So we're just going to use the system's default time zone. Next, we're going to get the value of the closest new year. So we'll get today's year and we'll add one to it. And then we're going to do, I believe the second argument is the month and the third argument is the day. So January 1st. Finally, we're going to return today dot days until, which is a function that's part of this daytime dependency. And we're just going to do days until closest new year. Now we need to use this function in our app. So we'll just go ahead and print out the value that this function returns. So we'll append it to our current string. We'll go ahead and add a new line. We'll say there are only, and if we want to call our function within a string, we can do dollar sign parentheses, and then call it within this parentheses days until the new year. All right, so let's open up our emulator again. Let's rerun our app. We see here that there are only 100, well, there are exactly 100 days until the new year. Let's see, is that right? It's currently September 23rd. So yeah, that's, that sounds right. Let's just make sure our app is still running in iOS. All right, and there we see there are only 100 days until the new year. All right, let's go ahead and wrap things up. All right, so what did we learn in this video? We learned how to set up an environment for cross-platform mobile development. We created a project with Android Studio that gives us 
all the boilerplate code it needed to get our app up and running. We covered the folder structure of the application. And finally, we expanded its functionality by adding a third party dependency and integrating it into our code. Again, if you want to learn more, check out the links down in the description. This is a new platform, so they're continuously going to be adding functionality, stability, documentation. So I believe it's a platform that should continue to improve over time. So let me know what you guys think of this platform in the comments to all the mobile developers out there. Is this something that, that you'd consider using? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.